agriculture in India employs about 60% of our workforce, but contributes to only about 17% of the GDP. Definitely, somewhere down the line, something's gone wrong and it needs to be corrected. Essentially, the problems of agriculture are pretty basic. It's not that there isn't enough produce being grown, it's not that there isn't enough demand, it's just, just no one connecting the two. Because inherently, at the heart of it all, agriculture isn't sexy. Agriculture isn't perceived to be lucrative or an attractive enough industry to have young talent come into it. And that's exactly the kind of mindset that we have at the Bombay Hemp Company. We're seven first-generation agri-entrepreneurs with zero agri-experience. But we consciously decided, instead of working in digital and cloud technology, we're going to go across the spectrum and work in a fundamental industry like agriculture and change it. Because agri-reform in India is inevitable. Not only to sustain India's economic growth, but the very fact that our civilization has to survive. The way we're doing it is cannabis. I am a cannabis farmer. But essentially, what you're thinking of right now, there are two types of cannabis. There's cannabis indica, what you're thinking of, which is known as, as bhang, weed, hash, marijuana. It has a psychotropic substance called THC. That's the thing that gets you high. It has very little industrial use. It is, it is illegal, and that's not what we use. What we use is cannabis sativa. It, it doesn't have THC. You cannot smoke it. You cannot go high. But it has 25 thousand end users across 41 industries. It's actually known as a trillion dollar super crop. It grows to 12 feet in three months. It is actually one of the oldest cultivated crops. The Egyptians, George Washington, um, um, uh, Henry Ford. Henry Ford made his first Ford car out of industrial hemp, actually. Uh, uh, Christopher Columbus sailed to, 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 to America and found it because of the ropes that he had off industrial hemp. It, it's actually played a significant part of our history. And which is why even today, there's a 1.5 trillion dollar global industry on hemp. But unfortunately, in all of this, the crop has been marginalized because of its association with its evil cousin. Well, y'all don't think it's evil, but, uh, but yeah, some people think it is evil. But essentially what we do, the good part is you can use the crop every day. And that's what we're doing. We're working with local farmers in India to make products for the most basic needs of mankind, of food, clothing, and shelter, but keeping in mind with the means of it, for, the, for poverty alleviation and rural development of the farmers themselves. What we're essentially creating are hemp foods. This is the, this is the world's most nutritional and balanced food source. The World Health Organization says that, that this is the best source for proteins and essential fatty acids of omega-3, 6, and 9. We're making hemp textiles. This is the world's most sustainable textile solution. The hemp shirt I'm wearing right now would have taken four times the amount of resources if it were to be made by cotton. And this is extremely critical because in India, there's, e there's extremely high amount of land fragmentation and small and medium farmers who own only about up to five acres. And this is going to be really beneficial if we go down this road. But the product that we're so excited about and the Indian government also so excited about is this. This brick, it's hemcret. This brick is a construction material for green building and it has hemp biomass in the brick. It's, it's carbon neutral, actually. It, it, it sucks in carbon, and because it's got lime in it, over a period of time, the walls and the bricks actually get stronger. And it's actually a cheaper solution than your everyday regular building material. It's a massive industry now in, in Northern America and in Western Europe to make green buildings out of hemcrete now. The Indian government is working hand-in-hand -hand with us to, to think of this as a solution to India's sustainable, low-cost housing problem. Um, so essentially, given India's natural geographic advantages, India can become one of the leading hemp countries in the world, which is why we work with global hemp companies and get their best practices into India. We work with government to create policy and framework to create the industry to begin with. We work with scientists to engineer seeds specific to the Indian climatic condition. We work with uh, farmers to not only cultivate the crop, but even process it and make products so they do most of the value addition. We work with industries to support the farmers with technology, and we work with consumers to, to, to understand hemp markets and, and create hemp markets. Ultimately, this can have an economic impact to the Indian economy of 2.4 billion rupees. And the best part is, all of this impact is for the farmers, which is why it's tough for us. Because we're not just trying to create a company, we're trying to create an entire industry from scratch and change the game for a lot of other industries too, while still keeping in mind sustainable poverty alleviation and rural development. And that's a challenge because, to think of it, Indian farmers are 10% of the global population. That's 720 Indian farmers. And we hope that using this, we can potentially change most of their lives. I think, I think at the end of all of this, we're pretty much making agriculture sexy now. Thank you.